In one of his final reports, the great Ed Bradley examined claims and charges surrounding the Duke rape case. Thorough reporting was conducted with a purpose to determine as closely as possible the actual truth of the matter. That full truth has been defined only in recent weeks, and this story was crucial to that final understanding. A Peabody Award then goes to 60 Minutes, the Duke rape case. They were even happier when the results came back. There was no match. No DNA from any member of the lacrosse team was found on or inside the accuser or on her clothing. Reed Seligman thought the case would Did now be closed, but he was wrong. It's so frustrating because that was an opportunity for us to exonerate ourselves, and we were told that. We trusted that if we cooperated, those that were innocent would be shown to be innocent, and that's just, it didn't play out that way. District Attorney Mike Nifong, who had declared that DNA would be the crux of his case, played down the results, speculating that the absence of DNA meant that the attackers may have used condoms, although the accuser had already stated that there were no condoms used and that at least one of her three attackers had ejaculated inside her. Although it was a major setback for his case, the DA said he was undeterred. For most of the years I've been doing this, we didn't have DNA. We had to deal with sexual assault cases the good old-fashioned way. Witnesses got on the stand and told what happened to them. And here to accept the Peabody Award is senior producer Michael Rudutsky. This is a, uh, a very bittersweet moment for me and for many of the people in this room. Uh, as Bob said, this was Ed's last story. And uh, he would have been standing right here, wearing that easy smile of his, that gold earring, and turned out in one of his fine suits. He would have been so proud and so honored to have received such a prestigious award as the Peabody. I would also like to thank the many people whose commitment and hard work helped to earn 60 Minutes this award. First, Tanya Simon, my trusted friend and brilliant co-producer. Uh, Sam Hornblower, our associate producer, our videotape editors, Rich Koppel and Stephanie Pilevsky, our cameraman Aaron Tomlinson and sound man Matt McGratton, the president of CBS News, Sean McManus, who has given us the encouragement and the resources needed to continue to produce investigative journalism at 60 Minutes. Our executive editor, Patty Hassler, I thank you for your commitment to accuracy and fairness and for keeping us all honest. Vicki Gordon, our executive story editor, and our leader, executive producer, Jeff Fager, thank you. This is your award, Jeff. I'd also like to say hello to Ed's wife, Patricia, who is sitting at one of our tables, Patricia Blanchett. And finally, if there's a lesson to be learned from the reporting that we've done on this story, it came from Ed Bradley, who reminded us along the way that if the system isn't working for one group of people, it's not working for anyone. And that is the least and the most that journalism should do. I miss you, Ed. Thank you.